All right, hello, my name is Connor Quinn. I'm a portrait and landscape photographer based out of Zanesville, Ohio. And today I'm gonna to be looking at the Fujifilm X100F. It's a uh, kind of a point and shoot style of camera made by Fujifilm. It's uh, mainly aimed at uh, travel and uh, street photographers with its you know, small and compact size. But in this uh, video, I'm gonna be taking a look at it for a landscape photographer or someone who maybe wants to get into landscape photography and is curious if their camera is capable of it. With the X100F, you get a 23mm f2 that's uh, you know, glued to the camera, basically. So, um, wide open, this lens is rather soft. Uh, it's, you know, it kind of gives like a dreamy kind of a look. Kind of like a film camera, you know how it just it doesn't have that uh, that tack sharp sterile look that you know other camera manufacturers don't have. So um, I think it's it's really cool that Fujifilm added this in here, and a lot of people would see this as a downside, but really it's it's a plus. You know, your Instagram is <laughs> your Instagram followers, are, you know, when they're scrolling through their feed, they're not really gonna care if your image is you know, 100% sharp at 400% crop or, you know, blown up on a poster board or anything like that. Um, so I, I think that, you know, the, the sharpness that's added up to is, is perfectly adequate. Now, what's really neat about this for a landscape photographer is when you stop down, which you would already be doing if, you know, you're taking a landscape photo for a wider depth of field. So when you stop down to, let's say, like F8 or F11, the image becomes like, like increasingly, increasingly sharp. It, it's it almost it, it blows you away. Um, I've taken a, a few photos. One of them is actually up here on the wall. I know you can't see that, but um, I mean it's a photo of a uh, of like like snow and trees at uh, at sunset, and you can see like pretty much each individual snowflake, or at least each like little lump of snow. It's it's incredible and it's plenty for any landscape photographer. You know, if you have this camera and good lighting, and you know you have a good composition, you're you're definitely going to get a good image out of it. People online talk about a sharpness these days, but it is an important it's an important discussion that has to be made. So the design of this camera is a uh, is, is actually really cool and really unique. Uh, with Fujifilm, they always love to just throw like all metal components, a lot like these film cameras. You know, this thing is it's, it's a tank. <laughs> But uh, Fujifilm's bringing this back with modern cameras. Like right now, I'm shooting on the Fujifilm X-T3, and uh, I've had it for a few months now, and, and I can tell you that it is a camera that's gonna last years and years and years to come. This is something that Fujifilm also brought over with the X100F. It's, uh, it's almost entirely made out of metal, at least from what I can tell. Uh, the only complaint that I had about the design, um, this is actually an older Nikon camera, so a Nikon film camera, so I can't show you on it, but um, to change the ISO, you have to lift up a dial, and it'll pop up with a little like window right here where you can see it, and you have to lift it up and turn, and with gloves, and I'm in Ohio, so it's typically rather cold in the winter, so I have gloves on. Uh, with gloves, it's it's rather difficult to, to uh, like do that precisely and accurately. So the, the other thing is the X100F is a rangefinder style camera. So that means that it has an optical viewfinder. So that means when you look through it, you're looking through uh, like a piece of glass or you know whatever they used in there. Uh, this is very refreshing. Um, I used to shoot in a Nikon D810 and it had a very large viewfinder and it was very easy on the eyes. It was really, really great to focus with and, and that sort of thing. But now I shoot on a Fujifilm X-T3 and it does also have a nice big bright viewfinder, but it's a screen. And just just bringing it back and shooting on an optical viewfinder was really nice. It's a it's it's very relaxing on the eyes. I, I, you don't really don't know how to explain this unless you've shot on a mirrorless and you you know you go back to the traditional optical way. Using the optical viewfinder was was pretty neat. But uh, when it came to the actual usefulness of it, for landscape photography that is, I, I kind of found it like a, a mixed batch. Um, it's, like I said before, it's very easy on the eyes, but you know when you're actually checking your sharpness and everything, you're, you're going to tend to look at the back screen. So 
Um, with the Fujifilm's uh, X100F 23 f2 lens, um, I think it was a really great idea for Fujifilm to choose a 35mm full frame equivalent lens on it. A uh, 35mm just kind of offers the versatility of a 50mm, but it also has the wideness of like a 24. It's it's right right in the middle between those two. Uh, it's 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 a lot like if you asked a professional photographer if they if they can only own one lens, chances are it's going to be a 35mm. For a landscape photographer, I found that 35mm is a very very nice focal length to work with. It's decently wide. It's but at the same time like decently telephoto. It's like a it's like a normal view kind of a lens. I, I found it really nice. I have no complaints there. So I had this uh, this camera for one week. Uh, Midwest offered to rent it to me. So of course I said yes because it's a it's an X100F. It's a camera I've always wanted to try even before I even before I switched to Fujifilm. I had a very very wide variety of, of photos and opportunities to, to test this camera out with. So um, I think that the photos will, will kind of speak for itself in terms of the versatility in landscape photography. Like I said before, if you're, you know, a uh, just an amateur photographer who happens to have this camera that used it for travel or street photography or whatever, and you want to dabble into landscape photography, I think that this is a pretty good option to start with. And if you want to do, you know, more paid work in landscape photography or, you know, more professional portrait photography, uh, I think that moving to the X-T3 or maybe even the X-H1 or the X-T2 for that matter since they have pretty similar sensors, um, I think that's a really good option. The I, I had a lot of fun with my X-100F and I've created a, a lot of images that I that I like with it and uh, I, I really didn't see a, like a lack of image quality when I was shooting with it. Um, I, would, I would recommend it. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Midwest for letting me rent that camera for you know no charge to me at all. I really enjoy working with them, and I strongly recommend it. They're great people up there. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.